Open with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. We'll be looking at verses 24 through 28. Really looking at 24 and 25. Uh, the rest of that passage is pretty much commentary on the main point that comes from verses 24 and 25. Let's read God's Word together. Then Jesus told His disciples, If anyone would come after Me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow Me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. The title of the message this morning is, But What Does It Cost? Diana has heard that a lot over the years. But what does it cost? Because see... Diana will come in after a, a good shopping spree and it's getting close to that time of year and she will lay everything out on the couch. She knows exactly what each item cost. She knows exactly what each item would have cost if she had paid the regular price. And she always says, guess how much it cost. Or she'll say, guess how much I saved. <laughs> and I say, it doesn't matter how much you saved, it's how much it costs. <laughs> and so when I was reading this passage and, and thinking about this, that's, that's what come to mind. If you just think about the audience of this passage. You know, Jesus starts out with, if anyone would come after me. Well, the people that he was talking to had already been following him. They had already been following him, his disciples. And just think about what they might have been experiencing for a moment. Some of them had already left home, family, and business in order to follow Jesus. They had already become fully committed followers of Christ. Now, Jesus is going to ask more. Now, to be honest, that's kind of how it works in our life. I can remember at the age of 15 hearing the message about Jesus, hearing about how He died on the cross to pay for my sins, hearing about how I was a sinner and guilty before a holy and awesome God. And, and you know, speaking to you right now, I can remember feeling guilt, feeling ashamed, feeling fear, not even wanting to go forward because that would be admitting in front of everybody that I was a sinner. That's kind of how, how our thinking can get twisted sometimes because everybody in here is a sinner, you know? And so the preacher said, if you just take that first step, just come on down. I remember sticking my foot out in the aisle and bringing it back and sticking my foot out in the aisle and bringing it back, just struggling. <coughs> And I just looked over to my sister and nudged her, and I went out. I was sitting about middle ways on this side, and I come forward. And I'd already asked my dad what was I supposed to say when I went forward, because I was scared to death about what to say. And he says, you just tell him you want to, put, you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And that's what I said. But just like the disciples here, I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know how much it was going to cost. And preachers... Often they preach about sin, even though that's starting to get less and less. They preach about the Savior and, and the price He paid. And they preach about the benefits of believing and trusting Him. You get forgiveness. You get a new heart, a new nature. And you have the Holy Spirit. And, and you can live a life of righteousness. And you can live a life that in relationship to God. And you can live a life that brings Him honor and glory. And you can make a difference in other people's lives. But preachers and evangelists rarely talk about how much it's going to cost you to follow Jesus. And that's what Jesus is getting at here in this passage. 
They've already decided to believe in him. They've already decided to follow him. And now he's letting in them in on how much it's going to cost him. And so as we jump through this revelation this morning, I want you to just evaluate your life. Evaluate where you're at. Evaluate your heart. You know, have you come to the point of total surrender of every aspect of your life to follow Jesus? And what are you willing to do to follow Jesus? You see, there are many benefits to surrendering your life to God as Lord and Savior. There's many benefits to following Him and, and believing and trusting in Him each and every day. One potential impact, if you will follow Jesus the way He is describing here in this passage, if you will follow Him in these three ways that we're going to talk about, I believe the world would see you as an authentic follower of Christ. There's too many of us that get labeled a hypocrite because we come to church, we say that we're a Christian, but while we are at work or out in uh, the world, there's really nothing different between us and the people who don't go to church. And so I believe if you will follow Jesus in the way that he is described in this passage, that the people in the world will see that you're an authentic follower of Christ, and that would make a huge impact in the world. Now, Jesus said, if anyone could, would come after me, and then he gives us three things. The first thing I want to say is, to be a fully committed follower of Christ requi requires the daily denial of self. Because that's what he says. He says, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. What does the word deny mean? What does the word self mean? How do you deny yourself? Well, first off, the word deny means to forget yourself. In order to forget yourself, really, that means Jesus has to be the one that you're focused on. Lose sight of oneself and your own self-interest. Now, what is self? Well, I believe that's referring to that unredeemed part of us. The Bible calls it the flesh. And I believe that the flesh resides in our brain. You see, the moment that you were born, you wanted to be the center of the universe. If you've ever been around one, two, and three-year-olds, they want to be the center of the universe, and they want everyone around them to cater to them. If they see another child with a toy, they want it, they go take it, because they are the center of of the universe. And see, as you grow and as you mature and you learn, learn how to interact with people, that self, that flesh doesn't really go away. You just kind of learn the boundaries that is available to you. But it doesn't change. The self wants to be number one. The self wants to be priority. Self wants the world to revolve around it. The self wants to be popular. The self wants to be successful. And the self doesn't care how it gets it. Now, when you become a believer, you receive a new heart. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anybody is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. And so you re receive a new heart. You receive a new nature. And so it's not really right to say that if you're a believer that you're a sinner. You're a saint according to all Paul's writings. But you're a saint who sometimes sins. But there is a part of you, that unredeemed part of you that's in your brain. All the thoughts, attitudes, behavioral patterns that you learned up to the point of becoming a believer. And all the junk that the world tells you that is right, good, and true. Well, Paul says in Romans 12, we need to renew our mind. And that's how you work out all that bad, sinful uh, thoughts, attitudes, and behaviors out of, your, out of your flesh is by renewing your mind. But... Here, I believe he's saying, deny the flesh. When the flesh wants to be number one, say no to the flesh. Say yes to Jesus. I had a thought. We went to Birds Creek this past week, and they spent a lot of money updating, and it's very pretty. And I know that sometime in the future, we're going to have to update the sanctuary. I believe God wants his sanctuary to look beautiful. And we have a very nice sanctuary. But the fear of, of the thought of trying to decide what color carpet that we're going to put back in here 
kind of made me just draw up a little bit. Because I know there's a lot of selves out here that has a different opinion about what color it's supposed to be. And those selves can be can become in conflict over the, uh, the color. And God really doesn't care what the color is. He just wants it to look nice. But we have to say no to the self. The self wants something and, it, it, and what it's wanting is in the world. You have to say no. If there's a temptation that comes your way that's enticing to uh, your flesh, well, if you're going to follow Jesus, you've got to be able to say no to the flesh and say yes to Jesus. The self wants to pursue the world. It wants to please itself. It wants to be number one. Even if it takes you outside of God's will, that's what the flesh will do. And we've got to be able to say no. We've got to be able to deny the flesh. At the moment of salvation, like I described about my experience, there was this battle of going on whether to go forward or to not go forward. And it's really a battle of wills. Do you want to surrender your will to God's will? It's all about control. As Americans, we're taught to be independent and self-sufficient. That's opposite of what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us to be dependent on God and depend on Him for everything. We, the flesh, wants to be the boss of your life. You got to say no, and you got to say yes to Jesus as Lord. Because He's Lord of your life whether you want Him to be or not. The believer, unbelievers in the world around us, Jesus is Lord of their life whether they want Him to be or not. In fact, there's going to be a time where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. If they haven't done it on this side, then it'll be too late. But they're still going to confess it. To surrender at the moment of salvation is to repent of being a sinner, but also repent of being the boss of your life. You deny your, yourself the authority over your life by giving it away to Jesus. You say no to self. You say yes to God as you go through each day. So, question after this main point, after this first point, do you surrender control to Jesus every day? Or are you the boss of your life most of the time? If anybody would come after me, Jesus says, you must deny yourself. So it's a requirement. If you want to be a mature, committed follower of Christ, you have to be able to deny yourself. You have to be able to say no to yourself, no to the flesh, and yes to God. And I believe this daily surrender <coughs> is needed to be even able to come close to accomplishing the next two. Because the cost just goes up from here. So not only do you have to give up control of your life, direction of your life, to God and His will and His Spirit to lead you and guide you. The second point is to be a fully committed follower of Christ requires the willingness to die. No, come back to this page. To be a fully committed follower of Christ requires the believer to take up his cross or her cross daily. That's the second point. Often we hear that somebody says, well, that's so-and-so's cross to bear. But that's not the meaning of this. You see, that means that often refers to a person's hardship in life. It could be living with an unsaved spouse. It could be having prodigal children, uh, living with a physical disability. And those are tough things. But taking up your cross daily, that's not what it's referring to. That's not what is meant here. The cross during this time period meant paying the ultimate price. Even if it was the way for a person to pay for their sins and their crimes, it was still the ultimate price. To take up your cross in this passage simply means you are willing to pay whatever it takes for the sake of following Christ, even to death. So has fallen Christ cost you anything? Because see, just to take up your cross means you're willing to pay whatever price it takes to follow Jesus. 
even to death. John MacArthur says, The true disciple, the, the fully committed follower of Christ, is willing to pay whatever price faithfulness to the Lord requires. The price may mean suffering martyrdom, as Paul did, or enduring physical exhaustion and illness in Christ's service, as Epaphroditus did. Whatever the particulars of a believer's cross-bearing may be, it requires the willingness to abandon safety, security, personal resources, health, friends, jobs, and even life. Has following Christ cost you anything? Are you willing to pay whatever price that might be required of you to follow Christ. Because see, we have people all over the world who have paid the ultimate price for following Christ. Here in America, we have it pretty easy. But I still believe if somebody is a fully committed follower of Christ and they are denying themselves and they're taking up their cross, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. The third point and like I said, the, the cost keeps going up. Is to be a fully committed follower of Christ requires the willingness to die for the mission of Christ. When Jesus says, follow me, in this passage, what does it mean? For whoever would, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So what does it mean by follow me? I believe it means follow me in how I have lived my life. In living righteously, living godly. Follow me in uh, the way that I love you, love others. Offer forgiveness, offer grace, offer mercy. Follow me in the way that I've had compassion at meeting other people's needs. Follow me in the way of obedience and the way that he has de demonstrated that obedience to us. Follow him in seeking out and reaching out to the lost in the world around us because that's his mission. And that's the point that I really believe is, is being talked about here. We've got to be fully committed follower of Christ and willing to die for the mission of Christ. You see... When Jesus was talking about this with his disciples, he knew the cross was in the near future. And he set us the, the example for us for what it looks like to deny self and to be obedient in the garden. You see, in the garden, Jesus went and he went to be alone and to pray. And he asked the Father if there is another way, if this cup can pass, that would be great. Because he knew the cross was coming. But he finished that prayer, but not my will, but your will be done. That's an example of denying yourself and being obedient. And we can deny ourselves and be obedient like Christ. How are you doing with your obedience to Christ? How are you doing with your godliness? How are you doing with your purity? How are you doing with your compassion and love for others? How are you doing with the forgiveness and mercy and grace that He has bestowed on you? You're supposed to be able to hand it back out to others. As a child of God, you have a choice to make every single day. And you have the power within you to make the right choice. You see, at the moment of believing and trusting in Christ, God gives us a new heart, but He also gives us the Holy Spirit. We have everything within us that we need to be able to live a godly life and to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Jesus. Now, Jesus also set the example of what it looks like to take up a cross. As an innocent person, undeserving of death, He did not choose to be selfish in that, did he? In the garden, not my will, but your will be done, Father. But why did he deny himself and make the sacrifice? It's because of his love for you. 
and the love for everyone in the world, for the love that every, for every person that would be. He was given a mission by the Father. And that mission was driven by love for the lost. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. I believe taking up your cross and following Jesus means that that mission is your mission. So are you seeking to save the lost in the world around us here in Purdue? Are you seeking to save the lost by taking the message to them? Because they're really not going to just come here for as a seeker just hoping they, they find the truth. Now, we're going to have to take the message of Jesus out to them. Are you willing to pay whatever price that is necessary so that you can do your part of the mission in reaching out to the lost in the world around us? You see, there is a cost associated with becoming a follower of Christ. We must deny ourselves, say no to ourselves, and yes to Jesus as Lord and Savior. We must take up our cross, and we must follow Jesus, no matter the cost. And this is just usually is not preached. But I believe this is a believer's message. Because I believe, just like the disciples, God gives us a chance to go to the next level. To work some areas in our life and, and make some adjustments so that we are denying ourselves and, and that we are taking up our cross and we are making sure that we follow Jesus each and every day by seeking out the lost in the world around us. So as you have evaluated your heart and your life this morning, my prayer is that every believer in here will take their faith to the next level and take their following of Jesus to the next level. I, I hope and pray that you will surrender more and more of yourself each day. And the benefits are greater than the sacrifice. Just imagine Diana having all this stuff laid out. The price is small, but the benefits are great. But there's still a cost. But I believe that if you will pay the price of denying yourself, taking up your cross, and following Jesus, that it will make a difference in your life. In your home, there will be more love, more joy, more peace. For the church, it will be more members focused on the lost in the world around us. The community will know us for our unity and our love for each other and for them. We will be transformed by the willing surrender to God, His will, and His mission. Closing with a story. The story is told of a plantation slave living in the Old South. And he was a happy old soul. And while he was out working in the fields... <coughs> He was happy and he was singing. No matter what happened to him, his joy was always full and glowing. One day his master asked him, What have you got that makes you so happy? The slave replied, I love the Lord Jesus Christ and he has put a song in my heart. Well, how do I get what you have? The master asked him. You go and put on your Sunday suit and you come down here and work in the mud with us and you can have it, came the reply. I would never do that, the master said, as he rode off in a huff. Some weeks later, the master came back and asked him the same question and he was given the same answer. A few weeks later, he came a third time and said, now just be straight with me. What do I have to do to have what you have? Just what I've told you the other times came the answer. In desperation, the owner said, All right, I'll do it. And the slave says, no, Now you don't have to do it. The slave said, You only had to be willing. It is not that a disciple has to be a martyr. It's not that the disciple has to pay the ultimate price. 
It's just the disciple has to be willing. And so are you willing to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus wherever He takes you? Are you willing to reach out into the world around you with the message of Christ? Guys, sometimes I have a hard time getting people just to memorize the Romans road, which is just about five or six passages, so that they can share the message of Christ. That's a very, very small sacrifice of time and energy. We're called to sacrifice so much more. God deserves us to sacrifice more. Now, if you have never believed and trusted in Christ this morning, I pray that you will just come knowing the benefits, which is salvation, forgiveness, eternal life. But you also know the cost. It's denying yourself daily, taking up your cross daily, and following Jesus daily.